This takes place in March, April of 2013. Me and a friend had just been to the movies and was just walking around at 10.45 p.m. We decided we would take a shortcut through the skewer of our old school, which had since been abandoned and was in pretty bad shape. As we walked through the schoolyard, we decided to try to get inside the school building and explore a little bit. Now the school consists of two wings, so the building is an L shape if viewed from above. It is three stories tall and has three entrances. The main entrance leads in to a kind of main hall which connects the two wings. Each wing has staircases in each end of the corridors which lead to the different floors. This is important later. One of the windows right by the entrance to the lower wing was actually wide open so we could easily get in. We were now in the basement. We used our cell phones as flashlights and made sure not to point them towards the windows to avoid being seen. Even though the building was not in use, there was still a lot of stuff left just laying around. Musical equipment, uniforms, a pool table, chairs, etc. So we were just exploring each room in the basement to see if we could find anything cool. We explored the basement for about 15 minutes before we headed up to the first floor. And we were now in the main hall. There was some kind of tarp or large plastic sheet hanging there to separate the hall and the lower wing for some reason. I assume it was for some kind of construction work. We went down one of the corridors and started exploring the classrooms. Every classroom had been either vandalized or suffered some kind of water damage, so everything was pretty broken down and rotting. In hindsight, I think we were lucky the floors didn't collapse on us or something. We had just come out of the third classroom and were in the corridor when we heard someone moving the tarp, plastic sheet, in the main hall. This was not wind or anything. We could definitely tell someone was physically moving it. We could also hear footsteps, although the rhythm of the steps was kind of weird. It sounded like someone changed their walking pace sporadically, if that makes any sense. We immediately went inside a classroom to hide, as we thought someone had called security on us. We hid behind the door in the classroom for about two minutes, dead quiet. We didn't hear anything else during this time, so we figured it had to be the wind or just random noises. We decided to keep going. We went through the corridor and up the stairs in the other end from the main hall and explored the second floor. While we were there, we would occasionally hear some noises, but we just brushed it off as wind. After a while, we had explored the rest of the corridor, and we decided to walk down the staircase that led from the second floor to the hall. Halfway down the staircase, there was this plateau before the second set of stairs, and this is where things took a turn. No pun intended. We could see the plastic from there, and it was moving. We also heard some kind of scratching noise. We stood there for a second just listening, and I decided to peek around the corner to see what was making that sound. What I saw scared the living crap out of me. It was some kind of creature. It was skinny, almost completely naked, couldn't see any clothes at least. Had really thin strands of hair and was really pale, like corpse. Pale, almost completely white. The first thing that came to mind was that this thing looked like Gollum, just bigger. It was crouching down and was scratching the floor or something, and it made some weird, growly, groany, breathy noises. It was facing away from us, so I just stood frozen for a good while and watched it. I took a step back and just pointed at this thing and looked at my friend. He peeked around the corner and immediately I could see his facial expression change into a combination of horror and shock. It was reassuring in a way knowing that he saw it too. We just stood there for a good 20 seconds just watching this thing do whatever it was doing, and the most cliché horror movie thing happened. My friend started backing away slowly, and while doing so, stepped on a piece of glass that cracked. This startled the creature, and it quickly looked over its shoulder right at me. I just bolted at that point. We ran all the way to the basement to get out, and the whole way there, I swear, it felt like it was right behind us. We ran back to my friend's house, and when we got there, we had a kind of debriefing session, making sure we both saw the same thing. 
The closest thing to a reference picture I can find is this. It pretty much looked exactly like that, just with thin strands of hair on its head. I understand if you think I'm lying, I would be skeptical if someone else told this story. But I swear this actually happened, and my friend confirms it to this day. We got a good enough look at it to confirm that it was a humanoid creature of some sorts, but it didn't really resemble a human being. The only explanation I can think of is that it was a homeless dude that for some reason was naked in this abandoned school. But this is in northern Norway during winter. You wouldn't survive very long without clothes. Also, I live in a very small town with very few, if any, homeless people so that theory wouldn't really make sense. It could also be some kind of animal that had found its way inside, but we got a good look at it, and it didn't resemble any animal I've seen before. I have no idea what that thing was. I am normally a rational, a camp's razor kind of person, but we saw what we saw, and I have no explanation for it. I am John, a seasoned park ranger. I know these woods like the back of my hand, or so I thought. One day I received a call that changed everything. A murder had occurred in the park, and no one knew who did it. When I arrived at the scene, it was clear that no human could have committed such a heinous act. The victim's body was mangled, and deep claw marks were etched into the ground. As I began to investigate, a feeling of dread came over me. I knew that something terrible was lurking in these woods, something not of this world. And then I saw it, a creature unlike any I had ever seen before. It stood over eight feet tall, with razor-sharp claws and eyes that glowed like fiery embers. Its breath was hot and putrid, and its movements were quick and precise. I knew I had to catch this beast before it killed again. But as I pursued it deeper into the woods, I realized that I might not make it out alive. The predator was nowhere to be found, and I was getting frustrated. I knew that if I didn't solve this case soon, more lives would be in danger. I went back to the scene of the crime and found a small scrap of fur that looked like it belonged to the predator. I sent it to the lab for analysis and waited anxiously for the results. When they finally came in, my worst fears were confirmed. The predator was a genetically modified creature that had escaped from a nearby laboratory. I immediately contacted the lab and informed them of the situation, and they sent a team to recapture the creature. But the creature was too strong and too smart for them. It outsmarted the scientists and managed to escape yet again. I knew that it was only a matter of time before it struck again. I spent every waking moment searching for the predator tracking it down through the thick underbrush and deep into the heart of the park. As I closed in on it, I knew that this would be the moment of truth. Would I be able to stop it before it killed again? With my heart pounding in my chest, I came face to face with the creature. It was enormous, with razor-sharp claws and teeth like knives. But I was determined not to back down. I drew my weapon and prepared to fight for my life. The creature lunged at me, and we engaged in a vicious battle. It was like nothing I had ever experienced before. But I was determined to come out on top. In the end, I managed to take down the predator and save countless lives. As I stood there gasping for breath and covered in blood, I knew that I had made the right decision to become a park ranger. I had protected the park and the people who visited it, and I had proved that even in the face of great danger. A single person can make a difference. When I was 19, I worked as a stalker for Target and had to bike to work early every morning, around 4 a.m. Worst job ever. One morning, I got on the bike and began pedaling the five miles like usual. After a while, I got the weirdest feeling. I could feel that something was following me. I can't explain it any better than that. It was like a sixth sense. But here's the kicker. I could feel that whatever was following me was following me from the air. Behind me and up in the sky. My heartbeat quickened and I started pedaling faster. Movies were pouring through my head. Jeepers Creepers. Lost Boys. Interview with a Vampire. 
any movie that has a scene in which something flies down and onto someone into someone in a vehicle. At this point, I'm expecting my rational brain to kick in and do its usual thing anytime I'm in a dark room or alone in an alley and relax me. It doesn't, and the feeling gets progressively more powerful. I'm now sure that something is following me and is getting closer. I can remember my vision almost seemed to blur as my hearing became more crisp. My body was shifting gears from one sensory preset to another. My back felt as sensitive as my palms. Finally, I get the balls to look behind me. Nothing, nothing there. I keep pedaling faster and faster. And I look behind me again. There is something there. I can't tell what it is. It's dark. A hundred feet up and following me. Now I start to crap in my pants. I can remember being incoherent almost, as if my body had shut down all higher functioning and replaced it with robotic movement. I remember thinking of Discovery Channel shows where the gazelle runs from the lion, and I know I'm the gazelle. I was simply waiting for whatever it was to land on me at this point. Me and my bike eventually burst into an empty but well-lit intersection and start heading down the hill to Target. The feeling lets up as suddenly as it seized me, and I knew I was safe. I looked around me and up in the sky, and everything was fine. Nothing there. I'm not sure what happened that morning, eleven years ago, but as you can see, I remember almost every second of it. I am John, an African-American park ranger stationed in the remote mountains of the Appalachian Trail. My job was to patrol the vast wilderness and make sure that everyone who entered it, hiker, camper, or otherwise, was safe and secure. It was a warm summer day, and I was on my usual rounds when I stumbled upon something that would change my life forever. I was following a trail of broken branches and torn shrubs when I heard a loud roar in the distance. I thought it was a bear at first, but when I reached the source of the noise, I was faced with something far more terrifying. It was a Bigfoot, a massive bipedal creature covered in fur, standing at least ten feet tall. I had heard stories of these creatures before, but I never believed they were real. But there it was, right in front of me, and it was angry. I was frozen in fear, but I managed to draw my sidearm and take a shot at the creature. It didn't even flinch, and I soon realized that bullets were not going to be enough to stop it. The Bigfoot charged at me, and I ran as fast as I could. I stumbled upon a cave and crawled inside, hoping that the Bigfoot wouldn't be able to fit through the entrance. But to my horror, it was able to squeeze inside, and I was trapped. The Bigfoot began to tear through the cave, looking for me, and I was running out of options. That's when I remembered the stories that my grandfather used to tell me about the Native American spirits that lived in these woods. I started to pray to them, and begging for their help, and that's when I heard a voice. It was soft at first, but it grew louder and more insistent, until it was a roar. The Bigfoot was thrown back from the cave entrance, and I was able to escape. I never saw the creature again, but I knew that it was still out there, waiting for its next victim. I soon found out that there were other people in these woods, and that they were searching for something. They were a secret service, investigating a series of strange and paranormal occurrences. They thought that I knew something, and they started to follow me, always watching me, always waiting for me to slip up. I was in over my head, and I didn't know who to trust, but I knew one thing for sure. I'm quitting my job. The pay is not worth the trouble of fighting various cryptids in woods. The Appalachian Mountains rise tall and proud with their rugged peaks and dense forests that stretch as far as the eye can see. As a park ranger and a native of the area, I was no stranger to the beauty and majesty of the mountains. But even I was not prepared for what I encountered one fateful night. I received a distress call from my tribe who were residing deep within the Appalachian woods. They told me that something strange was happening in the forest, and that they needed my help. I immediately set out to investigate, knowing that the safety of my tribe was at stake. 
As I approached the reservation, I was struck by the beauty of the forest. The towering trees loomed over me, casting dappled shadows on the forest floor. The sound of rustling leaves and rushing water filled the air, and I couldn't help but feel a sense of awe and reverence for the land. But my sense of wonder was short-lived as I was patrolling the reservation. I was suddenly attacked by an unknown predator. It was a monster unlike anything I had ever seen before. Its eyes were wild and its howls echoed through the forest. It was a wendigo, a spirit of the northern forests that was said to drive people mad with hunger. I fought back with all my strength, but the wendigo was too powerful. I managed to wound it, but it disappeared into the forest before I could finish it off. I was left confused and disoriented, struggling to make sense of what had just happened. Eventually my tribe found me and I told them what had transpired in the forest. They were shocked and frightened by my story, and they feared that the Wendigo would return. But I was determined to protect my tribe, and the next day I set out into the forest once again, this time armed with preparation. I knew that the conflict with the Wendigo was not over, but I was ready for the challenge. I knew that the safety of my tribe and the balance of the forest were at stake, and I was determined to put an end to the terror of the Wendigo once and for all. Again, as I entered the forest, I felt a strange sense of calm wash over me. I knew that I was not alone, that my ancestors were with me, guiding me towards the Wendigo. The sound of rustling leaves grew louder, and out of nowhere he appeared in front of me. I soon found myself facing the monster once again. This time I was ready. I called upon the spirits of the land and reached for a twelve gauge. An exciting feeling surged through my body. The Wendigo howled in rage as it felt the bullet go through its thick skin. Unfortunately, it lunged at me with its razor-sharp claws. Our battle was intense, and the forest shook with the fury of our fight. The Wendigo was strong, but I was stronger. I could feel the power of my ancestors flowing through me, and I knew that I was going to win. With one final bullet, I defeated the Wendigo, and he just turned over and ran. The forest grew quiet, and I felt a sense of peace settle over the land. The balance had been restored, and my tribe was safe once again. I returned to the reservation where my tribe was waiting for me. They welcomed me with open arms, and I could see the relief in their eyes. They knew that I had saved them from the Wendigo, and they were grateful. From that day on, I was known as the protector of the Appalachian Woods, and my tribe held me in high esteem. I learned that the magic of the land was powerful, and that it was our duty to respect and protect it so that future generations could enjoy the beauty and majesty of the mountains. As a park ranger, Adam had seen his fair share of strange things, but nothing had prepared him for what he encountered one night while patrolling the forest. It started with a strange noise, like a cross between a growl and a scream. Adam's first thought was that it was a bear or a mountain lion, but the sound was unlike anything he had ever heard. He cautiously made his way towards the source of the noise, flashlight in hand. The deeper he went into the woods, the more uneasy he became. It was as if something was watching him, something that shouldn't be there. Suddenly he heard the noise again, louder this time and closer. Adam shone his flashlight ahead and froze. Standing in front of him was a creature unlike anything he had ever seen. It was tall, with fur as black as the night, and eyes that seemed to glow with an otherworldly light. Its jaws were open, revealing rows of sharp teeth. Adam tried to back away slowly, but the creature stepped forward, blocking his path. He raised his flashlight as a weapon, but it seemed useless against this creature. The creature lunged at him, and Adam ran as fast as he could. He could hear the creature's footsteps behind him, and he knew he was in grave danger. But just when he thought he was done for, he burst through the trees and into a clearing. The creature stopped at the edge of the clearing, snarling and pacing back and forth. Adam could see the fear in its eyes, and he realized that it was just as scared of him as he was of it. After a few tense moments, the creature turned and disappeared into the woods. Adam collapsed onto the ground, shaking with adrenaline and relief. 
He never spoke of the creature to anyone, afraid that they would think he was crazy. But every time he patrolled the woods, he couldn't shake the feeling that something was watching him from the shadows. I was house-sitting for a friend in an ill-planned housing development out in the middle of nowhere. Everybody in the development had pooled their money and gone on a two-week cruise together. My friend didn't have cable yet, so I amused myself most nights by defending his refrigerator from a beer invasion. There was nobody for company but the one guy who had just moved in down the street and his great Dane-sized mixed-breed dog named Cujo, who hated me. Power went out one night, and we're standing in the road drinking the beer so it doesn't spoil. Any excuse, right? Mm. Talking about how spooky the place is, only lit by moonlight when we hear a cougar. Two things you need to know about a cougar's roar. One, they sound exactly what you'd imagine a woman being tortured to death would sound like. And two, they sound like they're right behind you, even if they're a mile away. Cujo's hackles rise, and he starts growling, staring off into the distance. More roars. I explain to the guy that it's a cougar, it's miles away. But the sound carries. That's a mating cry, and not a hunting cry. Nothing for Cujo to be afraid of, etc. Then we hear a second roar. This one literally sounds like it's ten feet away. Cujo cuts his head around, ends his growl with a little squeak, and stares at a spot right behind me. Right behind me, I very slowly turn around. Nothing is there. The cougar screams happen again, one far away and one that I swear is coming from the shadow of the house I'm looking at. I turn to the guy to suggest that maybe we want to go inside now. The guy and the dog were gone. In a few seconds, they'd gone far enough to be out of sight on a gravel road without making any sound whatsoever. More screams. This time it seemed like both were coming from the shadows of the houses around me. I'm sure I broke some kind of land speed record getting back to my friend's house. Then I broke another record closing and locking all the windows for the next hour or so, which seemed like a week. I heard screams from different places around the neighborhood. My beer, soaked mine, decided the cougars were trying to figure out which house I was in. When the scream stopped, I was convinced that they'd found me and were closing in. I very quietly started looking for the guns I knew my friend owned, but had hidden very well because he had children in the house. Every time I tried to lie down to go to sleep, I remembered my grandfather's stories about how the reason why cougars sound like a woman screaming is because they really are women screaming. They're humans trapped in cougar form by magic and pissed the hell off about it. Then I'd get up and look for the gun some more. I finally drifted off around dawn. I didn't see Cujo or the guy for the rest of my stay, but it turned out they were okay because my friend later mentioned that his daughters liked inviting them over and riding Cujo like a horse. I have always been fascinated by Yellowstone National Park. The sprawling wilderness dotted with hot springs and geysers is like nowhere else on earth. It's a place of natural beauty and wonder, but also a place of secrets and darkness. I was a park ranger in Yellowstone, tasked with ensuring the safety of all who entered its boundaries. One day I received a report of a missing camper. His friends had gone searching for him, but to no avail. It was my job to pick up the search and bring him back safely. As I ventured into the dense forests of the park, a sense of unease washed over me. The trees seemed to close in on me, blocking out the sunlight. I had a feeling that something was watching me, waiting for the right moment to strike. I pushed on, following the trail left by the missing camper. The deeper I went, the more disturbing the signs became. Broken branches, shredded clothing, and pools of blood dotted the path. And then I found him. The missing camper was lying on the ground, his body torn apart by some unknown beast. The sight was enough to make me nauseous, but I knew I had to investigate further. That's when I heard it, the sound of footsteps. Not human, but something else. Something big and dangerous. I turned around, my hand reaching for my weapon, but it was too late. The creature attacked, its jaws snapping at my flesh. I don't remember much after that. 
When I woke up, I was in an old cabin deep in the woods. I was being tended to by a woman who claimed to be a member of a secret religious order, tasked with protecting the world from the supernatural. She told me that the creature that had attacked me was a werewolf, one of the many things that the government wanted to keep secret. The Secret Service was aware of the supernatural creatures roaming the park and had assigned her to protect the public from the truth. But as the days passed, I realized that the woman was not who she claimed to be. She was working for the very creatures she was supposed to be stopping, and her true intention was to use me as bait to draw more people into their grasp. I was horrified and scared, but I knew I had to escape. I made a break for it in the dead of night, but the werewolf was hot on my heels. I ran as fast as I could, but the creature caught up to me, its claws tearing into my flesh. I don't know how I managed to survive, but I did. I stumbled out of the woods, my body battered and broken. I was taken to the hospital, but I never fully recovered. I was forever scarred, both physically and mentally, by my experience in Yellowstone National Park. The Secret Service tried to cover up what had happened to me, but the truth leaked out. People began to whisper about the werewolves in the park, and the government was forced to admit to their existence. But for me, the truth came too late. I was forever changed by my encounter with the supernatural, and I could never shake the feeling that I was being watched. The end of my story is tragic, but the terror of what happened in Yellowstone National Park still lives on. It happened in July of 2012 while I'm off with my boyfriend on vacation. He inherited a small house on an island in Brittany, France. It's called Isle de Groix. It's situated a few kilometers off the south coast of Brittany, and you can only get there with a ferry. It is pretty small, and only a few inhabitants live there all year long. There's not much to do, but it's really beautiful, and it's a nice place for quiet vacation. We like to go for rides during daytime as well as nighttime. Now I'll start telling my story 100% true. So one night, a clear night night, doused in moonlight. It's important to remember that. We went out around midnight for a ride on the island as we were used to do so. We headed to a beach whose name I can't remember that goes along a small family vacation village, VVF. Quick description of the area. The VVF is situated in a big curve bordered by a small road Alongside the road is a strip of grass and sand. When standing on this strip, you have a really nice view of the beach and the sea which lie below. The road and village are situated on some kind of a steep cliff. To go down to the beach, you have to walk down sheer narrow stairs, situated a few meters away from where we were standing. Kay, my boyfriend, and I were standing by the road on the strip of sand grass since like ten minutes looking down at the sea. I need to point out that it was a calm, clear night and we hadn't seen anyone during our ride. We were walking along the beach for a while and hadn't noticed anything strange, nor signs of human presence on the beach. No night swimmers, the water is very cold in Brittany even in the summer. No young people having a party on the beach, etc. So we were standing on a cliff facing the sea when suddenly, straight ahead of us, we saw a human-shaped figure get out of the water and hurry across the beach. I know, it's nothing scary so far. Except the figure was pitch black, contrasting with the clear sand and was not reflecting any light, like a dark shadow. It's weird cause, remember the moon was shining. We first thought it was someone skinny-dipping. Problem is, when you're going out of sea, you first swim to the edge of the sea, then you stand up and walk out of the water. This figure gradually went out, all the time standing tall, as if it was walking on the bottom of the ocean. Moreover, Kay and I had been looking at the water for a while and never noticed anyone swimming, as if it was totally emerged for at least ten minutes. At the sight of that, I felt particularly uncomfortable, not to say really freaked out. So was my boyfriend, who is not easily scared. Weirdest part is once the human-shaped figure got out of the water, it headed straight ahead to the foot of the cliff where we were standing. But it wasn't walking or running. It was sliding on the sand, like really fast. A pitch-black human, 
shape with indistinguishable face and features, sliding fast as if on the sand, almost gliding, not moving its legs or anything, leaving no trail or footsteps behind, all the time standing tall and human shape, average human sized and built. We stared at it silently until it got a few meters away from the foot of the cliff. Then, without talking, we decided to get the fat out of Dodge, still with this feeling of dread and fear. We never saw or heard of this creature again, and nothing strange happened during the rest of our vacation. My boyfriend, however, has witnessed strange things on the island before, but nothing that's related to this story. Thanks for listening. Hope to see you tomorrow, son.